Red Wings fans stand up Yeah, we gonna throw them wings up Wings up, wings up Show the league that this is our time Let's make the city proud We gon' win the Stanley Cup Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup After that we gonna party We gon' show everybody We show them all around the world We show them all around the world We show them all around the world We gon' throw them wings up We gon' throw them wings up uh. Hey, you guys got a couple power play goals here. Confidence is a little bit back, so. It's going good. Um, yeah, it's nice, definitely nice to get a few power play goals. Um, you know, we were, you know, struggling a little bit earlier in the year, but, you know, now we've kind of got a couple games where we're getting a few goals. So, yeah, it's nice. Hopefully we can keep it going. How would you characterize your year thus far? Um... I think it's been good. You know, I, I, I'm just trying to play solid and, and be responsible defensively, and um, you know, try to let my offense come out. And it, it's obviously a balance, and you know, I'm still working on it a little bit. But um, you know, I think so far so good. You, you, you know, do you think that? What do they want you to do? Is it is it just be a better defender, or be a little more edgier, be more physical? I mean, have, because they, you know, because you seem to fall into favor and disfavor you know what I mean you're kind of you know you're a young player but uh, obviously there's going to be some inconsistency but you know, you see, you see, at times it seems like what are they doing with Dennis yeah um, they just want me to end plays as quick as I can you know whether that be getting my stick on the puck or using my body you know and there's, there's definitely multiple ways to do it and um, you know they've kind of told me now that you know the puck does the damage so you know make sure you you know stop the puck from from going into the dangerous areas so um, just ending plays as quick as I can and then you know they want me to be you know assertive and, and aggressive on the offensive side yeah I know that's probably difficult because you always are looking to transition and always willing to make a play um, is it difficult five on five for you because when you're on the power play you seem to be really be in your element when you're quarterbacking that um yeah the, you know the power plays is always fun you know especially when you have such good players around you it makes it easy to put it on their stick and, and they'll be able to make a play with it but um five on five you just have to you know find the balance and pick your spots um can't be you know overly risky or, or you know make dumb or stupid plays but um but you have to take risks at the same time. You have to be aggressive. So um, yeah, it's just a balance and, and, and just picking my spots. You know, and, and you, you know, even though sometimes it might, you, you, a mistake may happen on the ice, you do have that resiliency to, to forget about it. I mean, if you're going to be successful in this league, you have to have a short memory. Yeah, absolutely. You know, mistakes are going to happen. Everybody makes mistakes every game. So um, when they do happen, it's just how you bounce back and respond from it. And you just have to put it behind you and, and stay positive and keep trying to make plays. You, know, you seem to play on all four lines at one point uh, during the course of the game. Uh, you, you know, do you still think that you know there's how much more improvement can you make? Um, obviously, over the years, it's been the consistency. I mean, uh, yesterday I told you guys that I didn't necessarily play my best game, so uh, maybe that's why there was uh, some juggling on the lines there, a couple shifts uh, on the bench, but. Um, that's that's the main thing. I mean, it wasn't my best, and I, I need to make sure to play my best game every night and help the team win every night. Where, how do you become more consistent? I know that's a loaded question. Uh, I mean, we talked about it. We talked about it. We talked about it. How? I mean, I think this year, for the most part, I've been pretty good. Yesterday, yes, I had an off night. Doesn't mean tomorrow I'm not going to have a great night. So uh, I just need to f be ready, focus before every game, and uh, just show up. Did the goal take you back to your junior days where, you know, you've told me in the past that there were just times where maybe you weren't on your best game as a junior, but you'd feel like it's time to score a goal and you would? I mean, because... You know, the game was on obviously on the line then, and you, you know, you were able to perform. Yeah, uh, I guess. I mean, so, some nights just go that way, and you get one scoring chance, and you you take the opportunity, and that's exactly what happened last night. You know, do you do you know when it's when you're not at your best? I mean, how do you try to self motivate you during the course of a game? Every single player knows when they're not at their best, and they know when they are. Uh, it's it's a natural thing, and I no no one knows my game more than I do, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I knew I wasn't having the best, and the, the the ending at least helped me out on that one. Road trip. I mean, 
you guys have won a couple of games. If you do well on this trip, maybe you can like turn things around here, it seems like. Oh, yeah. Completely agree on that one. Uh, obviously, it's going to be three hard games uh, every second night on this trip. So uh, we need to focus on Anaheim. They're a big, strong team. Uh, we know they're going to be intense, uh, especially at home. So uh, we, we need to be more intense than them and be ready for them. And uh, hopefully we could win that first game and get on a, a heater uh, for the rest of this trip. What gives you optimism that you know, maybe things are turning around? What, what did you like about the last couple games especially? Uh, special teams. I mean, uh, that's the difference in the last two games. I think uh, that's how we won our games. I think uh, over the course of the year, five on five, we's, we've been playing pretty good. So. Uh, special teams was a big part of our two wins this weekend. It also uh, seemed like the uh, last couple of games, uh, one of the things you guys haven't done is when the other team scores, you haven't let it get you down. So you can, when things weren't going well, the other team would score and all of a sudden you give up another goal. And another yeah, goal. I agree. I mean, uh, we talked about it inside the room and we knew like it's hockey obviously we're gonna get scored on at one point but we need to uh, react the proper way and i think that's been a difference over the weekend also abdicator he'll uh he'll be out for an extended period of time here um i don't know the exact timeline depends on on how it heals but uh you know i would say minimum three weeks and could be longer than that we'll just uh, keep giving you updates as the healing process goes uh, mid body tough loss obviously because he had been Pretty solid here. Yeah, I think uh, Abby's played good. I think he's played good here, and, and I thought he did a good job. You know, he, he obviously had the, the injury earlier and had to come back, and now he's got another injury, so it's tough for him for sure. You know, um, I appreciate the sacrifice that, that he makes. Uh, um, so it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, um, it is, you know, it's part of the game. And, and uh, so we recalled uh, Giovanni Smith, and uh, so we got 13 forwards at no West. Is Smith a good Got to, to plug in if you can plug in in the fourth line just with the, uh, the abrasiveness and the, the physicality. He fits in that fourth line well, you know. I think he brings uh, he can he can keep that line an element. I think that line's been pretty good for us, really. The Larkin line and that line have been two of our better lines throughout the season at different times, and uh, um, so he, he can add to that uh, abrasiveness, physicality, forechecking, net presence, uh, the things that are important to us. Um, so it'll be good to have him up. Year to, to get his game to where it is because he didn't start so smoothly in the AHL. Um, well, one, he's worked hard. He's worked hard over the last number of summers uh, and worked hard, uh, um, you know, over the last couple of years. I also, the, my, my biggest thing would be simplified his game through the neutral zone from, from the top of the circle in our end to the blue line. Uh, he's decided to skate with it, get pucks in behind, and do what he does best, and which is four check, ozone grind, net presence, things like that. So if I had one word that explains why he's uh, coming, it's, it's he's simplified his game in a good way. You know, he seems to understand. He plays within himself. Do you think maybe last year, was it just basically his first year pro? Was it growing pains or was it more of a, you know, just getting acclimated to, 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 to life as a professional hockey player? Yeah, I think part of it's just becoming a pro in, in a sense more of though, like when, when, when you're in junior, you, you're able to get away with certain things and, and because maybe you're a bigger person or a better athlete or a better hockey player than the ones you're going against. You're getting a pro and all of a sudden everybody's pretty close to equal and you to find ways to, to, to be successful and he's done a good job of uh, simplifying his game you know so um, I think the word playing within himself is something he didn't do when he first came and, and part of that is because he didn't have to in junior and now uh, he good for him and good coaching by Ben Simon uh, made him aware of it and he, he uh, understood it and uh, he simplified his game. Is, it, is that maybe the biggest transition a player has to make is to find their level of what kind of player they are? I can remember several Red Wings, you know, they were all 50 goal scorers in junior, but some of them had to learn how to become a grinder at the NHL level. Yeah, everybody plays the half wall in junior in the power play, you know, and up front. Like, uh, I think one of the, you know, one of the, the, the hard challenges for lots of guys, especially guys that were all offensive if they come and, and if their skill set isn't elite at the NHL level just because it was elite and junior doesn't mean it's elite because it's all it's all comparable to players that are around you then you got to find different ways to be successful I'm not saying that was necessarily the case with him but but uh, for him it wasn't a, a, this huge transformation but it just a, a minor adjustments through the neutral zone simplifying his game and, and he's done a good job with it how about Anthony he knows he can be better and 
and you know, and you have tried over the course of the years to get the most out of him. I mean, is that uh, how difficult sometimes is it to relate to him when you both are on the same page, but you can't get to the same result? Well, I, first of all, I'd say let's take everything in totality. He's been our most dangerous offensive player all season. So let's start there with the fact he's had a really good start to the year and he's, he's been our most dangerous offensive player. Is he perfect every night? No. Is anybody in this room perfect every night? No. Um, is it evident when, when he's not moving his feet? Yes, he's six foot five. Um, when he moves his feet, he's really fast. When he doesn't move his feet, you can tell. Everybody in the building can tell. That doesn't mean other guys uh, don't have uh, lots of nights where they're not, you know, where they're at their maybe 80%. But let's use B game where they're playing their B game, and then but you don't even know it as a as a as a fan or a reporter, as a coach. Uh, um, although I would say I usually know it. Um, with regards to Anthony, he he scored 80 goals in 80 games in junior, and he would self-admit standing still. And he could just do it. He was big. He was. He held onto the puck. He could do it. He's had to change habits. That does not happen overnight, nor has it happened overnight. He's worked very, very hard of it, uh, at it. Uh, I'm super proud of, of the effort that he's put into it. Um, uh, the, the, again, is it is it is it perfect? No, but but man, he's been a pretty darn good player for us this year, and, and uh, we're glad we have him. Some of it's probably the, the new guys who have come in. Some of it's probably not changing after a winning streak. But with Taro, is there? Is that something you guys are going to have to consider what to do with him here as he's not playing? Uh, you know, somebody's going to be 13 and potentially 14. You know, that's just the reality. Somebody's sitting out. I, I don't necessarily think that we're sitting here today and saying, okay, we're going to have Taro out for an extended period of time. I don't think Taro played poorly. I, I think he did, wasn't able to be as uh, effective offensively as, as, as he had hoped to start the year. It doesn't mean he can't be later on. Um, and so right now he's just kind of, you know, the odd guy uh, sitting out. And, and uh, but, but we'll see. We'll take that day by day and see uh, if he gets in here soon. If he gets in here soon, uh, then he'll have to play well. But we'll take that day by day. Kind of alluded to it, but what bumped him out? Just not enough production? Um, you know, I, I think you, you yeah. Uh, you know, like our power play was wasn't going at a, at a real great rate. Uh, we brought Fabs in. I was going to put Fabs in the power play. That kind of bumped him off. And he, um, you know, at Taro's size and speed, he has to really learn how to be unbelievably crafty. And I'm not saying you can't, but like wall battles are really hard for him because he's getting out muscled. So he's got to find ways to be unbelievably crafty to make sure he keeps possession of the puck. He's got to find ways to be unbelievably crafty uh, to win one on one puck battles. And that sometimes takes time. And, and, and uh, um, he had played fine, but but you know, obviously, uh, we don't score enough, and our and our power play wasn't good enough. And he's somebody that you know, if he's anything, he's a, he's he's going to be an offensive player, and he hadn't quite been offensive enough. He's a, a facilitator first, but have you noticed just from compared to last year, is he, is he maybe a little bit more tentative, maybe a little bit seems like maybe scared to make a mistake? Or no, I don't see that. I don't honestly see that at all. Uh, that's not the way I saw it. At least uh, uh, I think he's he's made some plays to be honest with you they they haven't ended up in the net that's not necessarily his fault he's put pucks on guys sticks and they haven't ended up in the net and um i just think uh uh you know that for whatever reason offensively was able to have even more success was that uh, playing with you know a lot early played with nielsen and and, and vanek and and then later played with double a i'm not sure i can't answer the question i just know um that he hadn't been quite as productive and and i know that for a guy that with his size and in in speed if he's not uh, really productive, then he's probably not bringing tons of element, other elements to the game. He's a very, very smart player. He's very smart defensively. So I never uh, had any um, worries of putting him on the ice against anybody, to be honest with you. I think he's a really good defensive player. In the end, he just wasn't quite, uh, you know, for a short period of time and quite been as productive as I'd like him to be. And when he goes back in, I'm hoping he's more productive. What kind of a jolt have you gotten from, from, from bringing these first two games? Well, Fabry's been uh, obviously, you know, real good in, in a couple different, you know, he's made some offense of plays that they've you know he scored the two goals early in the in the power play and I think that power play is kind of on a real short period of time looked pretty solid uh, um, and then and then you know the, the play he made uh, the area pass to, to Matt the last night was a real good player and he's a pretty responsible player you can tell he's been well coached by you know three real good coaches in St. Louis and um, he's a responsible player and, and, he, and he's played hard for us so he's given us a good uh, good boost. Jeff can you assess Perlini and where do you think he 
he's at. I know he didn't play much for Chicago. Is it still kind of a transitional period for him? You know, like anybody, I think when you go through a tough go, sometimes confidence is is uh, is, is is hard to, to attain to the level you want it. And I don't want to speak for him. He can speak for himself that way. But um, I think that last night, he, you know, he showed he's, he's showed flashes over the last number of games of being big, of winning a battle, of uh, putting himself in offensive positions, of using his speed. He took it to the net hard last night. He had a real shot in the slot last night. You know, if that puck goes in, then we say he had a really good game. And, and it didn't go in, but it, but maybe it goes in next time. So I think he's taking steps in the right direction. I was talking about how he thinks he can kind of trace Hronik's uh, ascension back to his world championships and, and how strong he was there. Mm-hmm. You've seen a lot of guys go through that process and then come in. Is there is there an impact that guys can get? How much can they get out of playing well there? Well, I think I think playing well it can it can really give you confidence. You know, like we saw it with Larks a number of years ago. We saw it with Heronic, uh, some, you know, Mantha you know, had a real good Worlds last year. Just you know, I think when when you end up in situations where you know there's some of the very best players in the world there, and you have a really good tournament, it gives you confidence that you can play, play with them and, and and be um, really good with the best players in the world, and that's a great thing. So you know, I think Heronic, uh, Mantha, Lark, and have all benefited fitted from their time at the Worlds. Are you a little bummed that you're going out west? I mean, you're a UP guy. I mean, winter wonderland outside, you know, this is this is your kind of weather, your element, Jeff. Yeah, I love winter. I really do. Uh, I'm not glad I'm leaving. I'm not mad I'm leaving, though. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, what do you guys need to do to maintain this role out there? Um, I mean, we're going to get three heavy teams, ba- yep. three bigger teams out there, mm-hmm, basically. Mm-hmm. So what's the key out there? You know, one, two, two big keys that I think are keys every night in this league, and that's special team and goaltending. I and mean, we've gotten that the last couple of nights. You know, I think we outchanced Vegas by our standard, 14 to 12 last night. It was a close game. Those games can go either way. In the end, we got a couple of big saves at huge moments, and uh, and we and we out specially teamed them. So that to me, you know, I think five on five, we've we've played fairly good hockey. I've said that lots. That's what the underlying stats say. Um, we got to win the special teams battle enough nights. We got to get good goaltending. And, and we've got that the last couple of nights.